Alright guys, welcome to Cisco Nate. Uh, so in today's episode, I'm going to show you guys how to install ISE, the latest version 2.7, on vCenter and ESXi 6.7. That's VMware's hypervisor product. So let's get to it. All right, so the requirements for this video to install ISE 2.7 on VMware's ESXi and vCenter 6.7 are pretty simple. There's three of them. You need a Cisco CCO ID. That's your Cisco user ID that you tend to use to log into things like software.cisco.com and other Cisco resources. If you don't have that or don't know what that is, stop now because you'll waste your time. Go talk to your PSS or CSS to get one made for you. The second thing on top of that CCO ID is it needs to have the correct entitlements. So your CCO user ID is associated with the contracts that you do work for. And those contracts have entitlements for certain software that they have purchased. Purchasing that software and getting that entitlement is what allows you to see and then download the software. So if you have a CCO ID and you don't see the software, Stop again, go talk to your PSS to get the correct entitlements so that you can then download that software. All right, the last two things are pretty simple. One is a computer with internet access. If you're watching this video, you've already checked that box. And the third one is to have a VMware ESXi and vCenter server running on the hardware platform of your choice. In this video, it's gonna be UCS 240M5, just so you guys know. Have a good one. Okay, so starting off as usual, first thing we're gonna do is soup to nuts. I'm gonna show you how to get that software. So navigate to software.cisco.com on the browser of your choice. Click on software download. I always tend to do it this way because then it automatically prompts you to log in afterwards. I'm gonna go through logging in with my CCO ID, my password, and then satisfy the two-factor authentication using Duo. After I'm authenticated using Duo on my phone, I come down here. Now I've downloaded the software before, so it shows up in my previous downloads right here as Identity Services Engine Software. You can come down here and type ISE. Whoop, it auto-completed for me. And then click on Identity Services Engine, or you can just type Identity Services Engine and hit enter, and that brings it up as well. So you click that, it'll bring up this software here, finish following the breadcrumbs, and you can see 2.6, the star, actually suggests that 2.6 is the current recommended software, and it is. But for this video, I'm showing you 2.7. There will be a few patches out coming up soon. Patch one is already on the streets. So I'm gonna go ahead and download the proper image for this install. Now, if you use VMware or ESXi, you know there's multiple formats you can install on VMware. You can use an ISO, and that's literally like taking a CD and inserting it in to install your software. The problem, complication, or I guess difference between that and an OVF or OVA is that you now need to know what the proper requirements for CPU allocation, memory allocation, and hard disk space allocations are, and you have to manually configure that yourself and then, quote, insert the ISO into the uh, VMware ESXi hypervisor so that you can install this. Right, so in this case, and, and typically you do that virtually by mounting, I don't want you to get munged up on words here, but the idea is you have to manually configure the VM resources appropriately and then install the software. The other option you have, and the one I would recommend and I'm showing you today, is the OVA. This is a uh, virtual appliance. This means it configures the VM resources for you as well as installs the software. So that is the simplest by far. Now the image I'm using is because I'm doing a demo for this is the 300 gig eval or small version. And typically the different sizes are pertinent for whenever you are trying to uh, install a full deployment where you have a pan for administration, PSNs, MNTs and all this other stuff. I'll get into what those are later and how you decide all of that information later for sizing and performance. And I'll send you guys links or provide you links on where to find this information yourselves, kind of teach you how to fish rather than giving you the fish today, right? So for today, we're just gonna go ahead and start the download here. And this download is pretty large. It's 14 gigs as you see here, regardless which image you choose. Remember, this just tells the 
uh, VMware how to install the appliance. That's why they're all roughly the same size, even though the disk space allocated to each of these can be drastically different. All right, so we're going to go ahead and download here. You should see an accept license agreement. You accept, and then it'll pop up here. Now, this is uh, 14 gigs. It's going to take a while, even on gigabit, so go get a coffee. I'm going to pan out, and we'll come back in a minute. All right, guys, so we're back. Uh, my ISC 2.7 OVA 300 gig eval image finished downloading. And uh, I wanted to take a sidestep here real quick to discuss uh, kind of the ISC design and installation mantra or theory. And I'm not going to go into it in a lot of detail here. I'm actually going to publish a separate video where I discuss all of the roles of ISC and how many different nodes you would want and which roles you want them to have. Uh, and performance and scale and so on so on. I'm going to do that on a different video But I wanted to let you know where those resources are now So if you want to go find them and do a little planning on your own you can if not That's what your CSEs or TSAs and PSSs are for lean on the Cisco resources to help you design your system Especially because we are privy to some of the niche uh, nuances to installing and configuring this for example HA or automatic failover truly isn't automatic unless your MNT role is on a separate node from your P from your primary pan and your secondary pan. Those are nuances you really need to have a Cisco engineer to talk to you uh, about to get you a good design. Anyways, first thing is uh, if you come up here and we search for ISE performance and scale, the first hit is a beautiful document that was published by a Cisco person that summarizes a lot of the performance numbers. So when you have questions about, well, how many nodes should I run if I have 4,000 devices and I know I have roughly 3,000 concurrent TAC accessions at any given time, this document covers all of that in extreme detail. Everything from the hardware that you need to run it how many PSNs, what version, how many resources you need, and if they're dedicated into a certain role or if they're running as hybrids. All of that information is here. Go here if you need that information. The second resource for doing this is ISE 2.7 install guide. I always open up the install guides because while they miss the nuances of when they say uh, click setup, you know, part of the reason the videos are useful is you can see where I click. That nuance is conveyed in this delivery mechanism. Whereas in the install guides, that is not always the case. But these install guides are very complete and are very good for the resources you are going to be using. If you come down to the VMware server, you'll see in my video, for example, that they leave you notes about each of these installs that are extremely useful, like, hey, don't use VMX Net 3. If you do, you might need to make some adjustments to the NIC interfaces. If you use E1000, everything works fine without any adjustments. There's also, hey, you have to enable hyper-threading or virtualization. There's a bunch of extra settings you need to pay attention to, like virtualization technology on the ESXi server. All of that is pertinent to doing these installs. All right, now that I've belabored that point long enough, let's get back to the actual install. So. The first thing I'm going to do is log into my vCenter since my image finished downloading. Now my vCenter is actually hosted on a UCS server that is remote to me. I'm connected to it through my desktop over a VPN tunnel, IPsec, LAN to LAN. Um, so there might be a slight bit of latency here. And you might notice that I've already pre-placed some stuff. For example, I'm going to show you one of the advantages of vCenter is the ability to use what's called a content library. And instead of the traditional way where you say, hey, I want to build a virtual machine, uh, and then you have to transport the OVF or OVA image every time you build that type of machine, on vCenter they expose access to the data store so that you can just store files there. And you can store the OVA image, and that allows you to sequentially spin up at disk speed on the backend bus these images. So if you need to stand up 10, it's very quick when you have it stored on a content library. So if you are in 6.7, you click menu, you go down to content library. And once it loads, we're gonna go ahead and add a content library here. I'm just showing you the whole process because it is very easy. We can add whatever notes you want and then the vCenter server that you want. In this case, I'm only running one, but if you got more, it'd be there. For the sim simplest install possible you just choose local content library i'm not going to go into what publishing or subscription libraries are and then you choose the data store now i already use my 
my hard disk drive uh, disk for a data store because uh, it's a slower disk speed, right? And I need the higher performance SSDs for my actual VMs that I want to run extremely well. So I click finish, it's gonna pop up an image here. Now, that is creating a content library. It is as simple as clicking actions and import item and then selecting that local file that you upload of your image. So this is how I would go about getting it into the data store once I've created the data store. Now I'm not gonna continue doing this process. I wanted to show you that. I'm gonna go back to my other uh, content library and show you what that looks like. So I'm gonna go back to my content library, images where I've already transferred this. And transferring that image, while it can be at land speeds, still takes a little while with a 14 gig file or almost 20 gig, whatever it is. So what I'd like you to see here is if you click on this uh, OVA or OVF that you've loaded here, you click actions, and click new VM from this template. Now that OVA, when you import it, actually turned into a VMDK, a bit level hard disk, and then an OVF file, which is the virtual machine configuration. How many processors, how much memory, uh, how much hard disk space and all of that. And then how many network interfaces to attach. So that's why this is so useful and so easy to do. And you'll see that demonstrated here. I typically pan away once I start these build processes or downloads because it takes a while. But what you'll see here is it is actually blazing fast from the content library to spin up an ISC 2.7 using the OVA. Now it's just running through a quick validation that checks formatting. Some of the images that are generated do indeed have mistakes and you'll get an alert there. This image was made so that you can do your eval, small or medium. I'm gonna choose eval. All that does is change the resources in the OVF template that's going to be used that will be allocated to this machine. Now what you don't see exposed here is the disk size and that's being manipulated as you choose each one of these as well. So I'm gonna click eval, click next. And then here I'm gonna choose my SSD because I want this to be installed as fast as possible. Now you have a few options here. You can do thick provision lazy zero and that's where it provisions the entire hard drive. All 300 gigs in my case are gonna be reserved up front and then nothing else is going to be able to touch it. And that whole disk space is already initialized, i.e. lazy zeroed. Eager zeroed is just a better way of like zeroing out or clearing out the previous data as you create this. But the idea is you want thick provisioning because if you do thin provisioning, that induces latency as reads and writes and as the data store expands. So you have a 300 gigabyte disk image. You might only have 17 gigs of space right now if you thin provision. As you're writing logs and more data and you need more space, the hypervisor is dynamically allocating and expanding your store and that induces minor latency, but that minor latency can cause issues with your ISC deployment. Do not do a thin provision unless you're in a lab. All right, so thick provision, lazy zeroed. We're gonna go next. It's automatically going to assign whatever interfaces we need. In this case, I'm gonna put it on my management. You choose the network that you want it to be on. And this is for the primary, obviously, management interface. And then we're gonna have it statically addressed and that's controlled inside the setup of this machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and click next here and you'll see just how fast this is. I review my changes and finish. Now, to be honest, my screen is probably gonna freeze here. Uh, I don't know why that is. It'll stay stuck at zero. But if I give it a minute or two here and then I refresh, you'll see that the process is already completed. So we're gonna go ahead and keep taping. I'm gonna talk about some of the other nuances that happen further down the line. So I talked about how easy it is to deploy an ISE OVA from the content library. The reality is what you would likely want to do is install this virtual machine, have it uh, in this pluripotent stem cell state where it hasn't turned into any particular node or role yet and clone it. Now this is important. If you want to use cloning, which requires vCenter, to replicate your ISE install because you're going to have, say, two PANs and four PSNs, you have to clone before you run the setup program, which means as soon as this finishes installing here is when you want to clone it. Now, I don't mean you have to do it within two minutes of it finishing doing the install. I just mean you cannot run the setup program first. You have to clone it first. All right, so we'll go ahead and let that finish uh, replicating here, and then I'll go ahead and show you how the setup program looks and walk you through that whole process all the way up until we can log into our first ISE instance. 
Okay, I'm back. Now, I told you I wasn't going to pan away because it is really fast, and it is. But to be frank, I had to get a drink. My voice is getting hoarse. Uh, but let's take a look at the logs here to see just how long that took. Here's the original test for deploying the OVF template. It started at 434 and it finished at 436. That's two minutes to deploy this VM from the template, which you can now do again. This OVA is still here in your content library. So let's go take a look at this new VM. <coughs> I went ahead and installed it here, it was just called ISE. And we'll go ahead and kind of look at what it set up. So it assigned four CPUs as we saw, 16 gigs as we saw on the template, and 300 gigs as the image said was going to be allocated for an eval instance. Now you can see it's thick provision, it's on SSD, that's what I wanted. Now it starts off with six network adapters automatically configured, and they're showing disconnected now just simply because this VM has not been powered on. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna go ahead and power it on, I'm going to scroll back up to the top, and as soon as it has started, I will then console into it through vCenter. This is also one of the features I like about vCenter. If any of you have used VMware products, the web console is very nice to use. Now, not so much when you're trying to do some debugging and other stuff. SSH is better for that, but at least for initial configuration of these devices before they have an IP, it is wonderful. So I'm going to go ahead and web console into this now that it's started up. And here we are. Now Cisco actually did a really great job with uh, improving the ISE install and deployment process. You can see it prompts you here, please type setup to configure the appliance. So I'm gonna click in the window, type setup, and hit enter. I'm gonna give it a host name, ISE.CiscoNate.local. Now that is my local domain that I have defined here. What, uh, alphanumeric and dash only. Oh, host name, not fully qualified device host name. So I'm just gonna call it OEC. Enter IP, uh, 192.168.194.67. So all of this information is information you would ideally have planned out already. In particular, you obviously need the host name, IP address, netmask, Cisco Nade local, this default domain, prior name server, 16. You need your DNS server, of course. No. NDP. Time.nist, sure, I've got access to the internet, I'll use time.nist.gov. Now in your closed environment, it is extremely important that you set up NTP correctly. So if you are in a closed network, you must already have that information and point it to the NTP server at install time. Do not try to change it later, it just complicates your life. No. EST. If you're installing multiple ISC nodes, not only is NTP important, but the, the time zone for which you configure all of these is also extremely important. Make sure your time zone is consistent across all of your devices. Enable SSH, yes. Username admin by default, sounds good. Set up a default admin password. Now, do not be confused here that the CLI admin login and the web admin login are not one in the same. So just understand that during the initial setup, you are setting up the first CLI and admin user, but thereafter, those are two separate and distinct entities. And you have to be careful with that because many people will lock themselves out and not know how to log into the other one because they've long since forgotten the password that was configured on the other access method. So this process, as it configures and builds itself up, is actually going to take a significant amount of time. I'm gonna go ahead and pan away here and I will come back to you guys when it's done and let you know roughly how long it took. All right, and we're back. So uh, if your IC install completed successfully, you'll be seeing this prompt here. Now mine says ISE login and that's because IEC was my host name. So whatever you named yours is what it will say here, and then login. So this is good, everything looks good. Remember the address we gave it. So the address I gave mine was 
192.168.194.67. And once it is installed and you see that prompt, uh, it typically you have to wait about 15 minutes after you see this prompt before the web service has actually started and is able to respond. Uh, but we'll come back to my page here. I should be able to log in with the default username and pass. If everything worked properly, you'll be able to log in here. Perfect. All right, so my authentication worked. That means my setup was complete. This whole process took about 25 minutes for me. Remember that's with an SSD though, as my read write. So database building was pretty fast on the back end. Uh, so once we get to the home screen here, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this video. Go ahead and look out for my next video where I'll show you how to do the normal default integrations that you would typically use on an enterprise ISE. Things like Active Directory, PKI certificates, DNS, NDP, all of that stuff. I wanna show you guys how to do the default integrations that most people will use so that you can be up and running in no time. All right, thanks guys, have a good one.